four, three, two, one. Ignition sequence has started. Lift off. We have lift off. Challenger Houston, your go for PI. Okay, Houston, master arm is on. I've got two good lights. Fuel is good. Here, get close. 40 feet, going out at three. And the computer likes it. Very little done. Stand by for touchdown. Contact. Okay, Houston, the Challenger has landed. Oh, man. As I step off at the surface at Taurus Littrow, we'd like to dedicate the first steps to all those who made it possible. I'm gonna go deploy an LSEP. Have at it. We got them three cores, we got the neutron flux down, and we got two heat probes. And an LSEP. Okay, congratulations. Oh, you won't believe it. Oh, there goes a fender. Caught it with my hammer and it just popped right off. Challenger Houston, uh, we've been working on a uh, fix for the missing fender. I think it'll stay. I think it'll stay. The fender fix is working so far. Beautiful. Look at that trainer. Woo! Oh, man, it's shivets. Woo! Get it on the right side, it'll go this way, maybe. Good eye. Good eye. There you go. A good man. Man, that's the way to come downhill. <laughs> Just don't stub your toe. <laughs> Two hours and 46 minutes into this EVA. Jack Schmidt taking a rake sample. Heart rate's running in the 90s. Boy, I tell you, there just aren't any rocks. There's a couple, keep going. Yeah, you got about four rocks, about uh, two inches and smaller. Okay, let's just get the soil and press on. We'd like to move in within three minutes, three minutes. Okay, you got it? Hey, forget the soil. Forget the soil? I want this moving in three minutes. So let's go. No, get the soil, guys. Get they the don't soil. Have don't soil. forget the soil. Get the soil. Yeah, we want it. I'm sorry. I thought you said skip it. Got your bag? Yep. One scoop Schmidt, they call me. That's good. That's bag 508. Copy that. Well, we ought to start moving out of here. Yep, let's go. Thank you. 
The basic major objectives are to follow on to the previous flights, especially Apollo 15 and especially Apollo 16, and try and put together the works and the words and the paragraphs of all of our lunar exploration. We hope that, uh, geologically speaking, we'll uh, be able to uncover rock types and different types of geologic finds that date back from the very beginning of the moon to the, uh, to the present time. And, of course, the major objective here scientifically is to be better able to understand our own Earth, our own evolution of life as our Earth knows it, our own environment, and maybe better predict what might happen in the future concerning civilization here on Earth. The continued investigation of the sun by looking at the soils on the moon will be enhanced at the Taurus Lytro site because of the existence of several surfaces that have been exposed to the sun for varying lengths of time. The soil is built up by repetitive impact bombardments, each one of which throws out a little layer of ejecta. And every time it does that, it exposes a new surface to the sun. And these layers build one upon another through time. And of course, cosmic rays, solar wind, are changes in the magnetic field that affect the soils on the moon. And if we don't understand the sun, it's going to be very difficult to understand how to preserve the environment that we now know, because the sun is still the prime force for change in the environment we have to deal with. Now, there are two basic ways that we have of sampling the soil cover on the moon. One is just with a uh, scoop that I have, I generally carry around, and this is capable of sampling down to say 20 to 40 centimeters, depending on how much time you want to spend digging, and you can be fairly selective with it. Now, it's fairly time consuming, but for certain purposes, it's the best way to do it. You can dig a trench and you can sample individual portions and observe and learn as you sample. Bob, I've dug a trench in the uh, side of this uh, crater. There's uh, quite a uh, marbling of uh, light and dark soil. Uh, it looks as if there's a uniform three centimeter layer of light material. Now when I say uh, dark, I mean a medium gray. Okay, copy that. Sounds like a great sample site. Now on the other end of the spectrum, we have this very dark cover, mantle as we call it, over the site which from all the evidence that we now have indicates that this is fine-grained, fragmental debris that resembles the kind of volcanic ash that you find in the western United States. And we can predict that the age of that surface is very young relative to other rocks on the moon. Uh, it may be younger than one billion years. Now that still sounds like pretty old rocks. Uh, and on Earth it is. A billion-year-old rock is a very old rock, whereas on the moon we're saying that would be one of the youngest rocks that we found. So it's, it's sometimes difficult to maintain this dual perspective of the Earth being a very dynamic and very young, geologically speaking, environment, whereas the moon has been very static for literally billions of years. The history is still important. It's static history, but it's extremely important to us, as I hope I, I have indicated. Well, the first core is going down pretty good, uh, Bob. Okay, great. Oh, man, that's pretty nice. 
Another technique we have of sampling the surface of the moon is the use of some short core tubes. And they'll get down to a depth of 70 centimeters and get a very well-preserved, geometrically true sample. And, and that is probably one of the most valuable samples we have down to that depth. Uh, for one thing, at about 70 centimeters, we learned on Apollo 15, you have a, a minimum temperature zone. It's very stable. The uh, ground above it is highly insulating, and that temperature is about minus 20 degrees centigrade, which means it's a cold trap. It means that volatile elements that are moving around within the soil will tend to concentrate there. So we can start to learn about these trace elements, about the lunar atmosphere, about what kind of gases does a planet evolve. The moon is not big enough to hold the gases, but it is, is almost certainly evolving gases. And we need to know more about that if we're going to understand the origins of our own hydrosphere and atmosphere on the Earth. If you see it, Bob, it's full. See that? Roger, we see a long thing in your hand there, Gene. The only one to see the bottom end right now. Well, I'll be a son of a gun. It looks like what I'm walking on. It's obviously not powdery. It's obviously very, uh, very cohesive because it, it, uh, the bottom of the core is not smooth. It's very jaggedy and fragmental-like. Okay, copy that, Gino. Very good. Ah! Boy, another exercise in dexterity. Good Lord. Jack Schmidt having a few problems. Oh, it. Okay, oh, dead gummit. Well, would you go over and help twinkle toes, please, Gene? Really. And be advised that the switchboard here at MSC has been lit up by calls from the Houston Ballet Foundation requesting your services for next season. I should hope so. We hope it was worth the effort. Oh, it's all worth the effort. Okay, where are we here? I'll get on. Okay. Okay, let's go. We all get a picture back at station four, which is the crater shorty. Estimated driving time, 16 minutes. TV coming in now. Shorty is clearly a darker rim crater, but inside, Man, are you going to get a picture now? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, hey. Wait a minute. What? There is orange soil. Well, don't move it till I see it. It's all over. Orange. Don't move it till I see it. I've stirred it up with my feet. Hey, it is. I can see it from here. It's orange. Man, let me put my visor up. It's still orange. Sure it is. Crazy. I've got to dig a trench, Houston. Fantastic, sports fans. It's trench time. That's it. That's the volcanic bit. I'll be orange soil on the boat. Oh, man, that's incredible. Oh, that's phenomenal. Look at where the contact between the gray and yeah, the... Yeah, right, I, and it's on both sides. Before you disturb it, let me just get a couple close-ups of... Get a little closer, Dino. There you go. Okay, back that one. And that orange band is about a meter wide, I think. About a meter. You can't get to the end of it, bottom of it, though, can you? I haven't been able to yet. Okay. Uh, just to be sure, why don't we sample this side of it, too? There isn't enough time, don't you? Can. To do it, no matter which way you want to do it, we need more time. We may have to flip. We have to flip by the uh, they got to leave at a certain time, regardless of what we got. That's good. Maybe you might want to shoot off a few frames of the uh, north and south and see if they look interesting. I, I can't tell from the TV. If they look interesting. If they look interesting. Now what kind of thing is that to say?
I guess we're ready to leave here, huh? Well, if they don't want us to stop here, I guess we leave. Roger, we're ready to guys to leave there. And we're pressing on towards Station okay, 5. Okay, uh, Station 5 is Camelot. Good old Camelot. Do you think that's Camelot or not? I think that might be Camelot. Look at that. Look at that. Here I am, folks, in the middle of Boulder Field. Just minding my own business. You've got uh, 25 minutes at this station, guys. Uh, the priority will be uh, subfloor documented sample and subfloor rake soil. Okay, we'll get to work. Man, that's a hard move. How about this junk down there, Gene? What are you looking? That plate piece? Yeah. Beautiful call. Beautiful call. That's come from uh, 15 years as a trained hammer bearer. I like how your geology training did come in handy. You learn where to hit rocks. We'd like to leave immediately. Just not there. Hippity hoppity, hippity hoppity, hippity hoppin' over hill and dale. Da 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 I'll tell you, it's also uh, a pretty philosophical thought to think you're riding around out here uh, undisturbed everything. If there was someone here way back when sometime, they didn't leave much sign of their whereabouts. But uh, that's an interesting thought, too, as you drive around all of a sudden cross your own roller track and figure out those are the only ones that have maybe ever been here. Very true. Hey, it seems like a short day. Well, I tell you, the time went fast. Hey, here's some rover tracks. Hey, somebody's been here before. Man, we've covered 19.3 kilometers, Jack. And there's Challenger. Hey, hello, Challenger. Okay, Joe, I'm waving goodnight to you. Okay, Gene and Jack, uh, we'll uh, say goodnight to you from down here. Just want to end by saying what a terrific job you did today, and uh, really looking forward to tomorrow. Have a good eight hours rest. Thank you, Joe. Tomorrow we answer all the unanswered questions, right? If not more.
like it has uh, kind of a ray type uh, pattern to it. I'll mark that crater. I don't even know if it's got a name or not, but I'll mark it on my map. You know, the moon's got a lot more color than uh, I'd been led to believe. Because I had the impression that everything was the same color. That's far from being true. Perhaps color is in the eye of the beholder. I think uh, there's a considerable amount of truth to that. Challenger looks as good as ever. Uh, no problems at all through the night. Outstanding, Gordo. And it's about 4.30, a Wednesday afternoon, as I step out onto the plains of Taurus Lickdraw. Beautiful valley. Amen there, Gene. Amen. And the crew's on the way to Station 6 at the foot of what's believed to be a long boulder trail up the North Massif. TV coming in. We're right at station six. You wouldn't believe it. I would. Oh man, what a slope. There's no level spots to park here though. You want me to block the wheels? <laughs> <laughs> you got the brake on, I hope. You betcha. It's a beautiful east-west split rock, and this boulder's got its own little track. Right up the hill. Why don't we sample the split first? Right here. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get the shadowed material. Okay, you got a bag? That's in bag 312, Bob. Copy 312. Wait, we're on. Jeez. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know if I could lean up hill enough. I can't. <laughs> Holy smiley! <laughs> Why are we on a slope? You okay? I don't think you can get are we, are we on a slope? <laughs> Outstanding! <laughs> Outstanding! <laughs> Man, that's rough country in there, isn't it? Hey, we're getting good at that. Yeah. Hey, there are chips up here on top. Yeah, okay. it looks like there's been a geologist here before us. Jack Schmidt shooting panoramic photography. I hope my lens is clean. Hey, uh, Jack, can we see your uh, gold visor up? You may want to put it down out here in the sun. Bob, I'll, uh, I'll use it. Oh, me oh my. 
like a blocky rim fresh impact crater right now. 17, we're looking at a nominal station nine here. You got about uh, two, five minutes remaining. No such thing as a nominal station anymore. The geology won't let it be nominal. This may be the first and only one of the Travers. Well, the geology field training has a fairly long and involved history within NASA. It has evolved to a fairly sophisticated and specialized training program. It started out based largely on the experience that geologists had had with training students at the university level. And it became fairly clear that this was not an effective way to train highly motivated, very intelligent men for the specific task of exploring the moon in a geologic sense. Looking at them a little more carefully, some of them look. That looks like a breccia right there. Huh? Yeah, there's some interesting patterns on the surface. So we gradually brought into the program some of the very finest professional teachers in geology. It turns out these people, as is usually the case with very fine teachers, were also some of the top scientific minds in their particular areas who could 
give the type of geological information we needed in training, but in the context of the kinds of operations and the kinds of constraints that a man would be dealing with on the moon. And the combination was unbeatable. And we produced, I think, some outstanding geologic observers in a short time frame who were more than adequately carrying out the job that was assigned to them. Well, I'll say one thing for old man Sturg. It's blocky. Woo! Tiptoe through the two that... Okay, Bob, one thing I noticed we do uncover, there's a lot of two, three, four millimeter size uh, fragments of glass we're kicking up all over the place. Yeah, yeah, I think it is glass. At least it's glass covered, just glass covered. Look what's underneath it. Well, I don't know what's underneath it. It's white. Come here, Gene, quickly. We can't leave this. This may be the youngest mantle. I don't believe it. Three inches below, four inches below the surface, a very light gray material. We got some pretty good pictures of it, I think. Okay, copy that. EVA time, five hours, 16 minutes. The crew will head back towards the lamp. Let me throw the hammer, please. It's all yours. Now, hammer thrower, it's your challenge. 
Challenger, and uh, thank you for the vocal rendition from the moon there. Well, we wanted to let you know we were thinking about you this morning, Gordy. Hey, Gordy, uh, and in the tradition of Apollo 8, I've got a familiar poem for you. Well, it's the week before Christmas, and all through the limb, not a commander was stirring, not even Cernan. Their samples were stowed in their places with care, in hope that with you they soon will be there. Up on a cliff there rose such a scatter, I sprang from my hammock to see what was the matter. Sun on the breast of the surface below gave the luster of objects as if in snow. And what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature rover and eight tiny reindeer. And a little old driver, so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. I heard him explain, as over the hills he did speed, Merry Christmas to all, and to you all, Godspeed. Gordo, that's the first time I heard that, and I gotta say, that was beautiful. People always said we ought to have a poet in space. I don't think we've made it yet. That's uh, Jack. Very good. Houston, Challenger is go for liftoff, then we're 50 seconds now and we're go. As a Challenger, uh, you're go for liftoff. Okay, Master Army is on. I've got two good lights. 25 degrees per second, 25. Attitude translation, four jets, four jets. Balance couple on, on, dead man, man. Dead man, dead man. Board to board stage, reset. Board to board stage, are reset. Attitude control, three to most control. 99, proceeded, three, two, one. Decision. Right away, Houston. I hear you have good front. Let's get in the docking attitude. 
Okay, we're getting pretty close now. Okay, here we go. Stand by, Jack. Stand by. We got it. Captured. Captured. Go to free. Good. It's out here. We're free. Okay, Houston, we're hard docked. Back here, understand. Two gray. Two gray. That's a burn. Okay. Open the hatch. Hey, hey, here he comes. <laughs> Beautiful. Good show. The crew will begin transferring samples and other equipment into the uh, command module and begin the process of getting themselves from Challenger into America. Challenger, your go for closeout. Okay, uh, Houston, Challenger is going off the air. Okay, Challenger, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. It seems like an unfitting finish to a super bird, but uh, it's got one more job to do. Roger that. Okay, here comes the pirates. All right, probably three, two, one, mark. We got it. Did we get it? Looks like we got a good separation, Houston. There she goes. America, Houston, I think this is what you wanted to hear, your go for TEI. Outstanding. Okay, Gordon, I understand America is go for TEI, and I will see it coming around the other side.
we may all have the opportunity to see mankind enjoy the benefits of the Apollo program. This is Apollo Control, Apollo 17 spacecraft now approaching ever faster to Mother Earth. Apollo Control standing by. Eight, we're five seconds from our RT. Roger, American. Our RT. Okay. Okay, about three point one Gs. And beginning of blackout was at the predicted time, 400,000 feet or approximately 85 miles above the Earth. The Spaceship America saw the completion of mankind's first evolutionary steps from the planet Earth into the universe. In doing so, he established a tradition of peace and freedom within the solar system. We move to greet the future. Hello, Houston, this is America. We're stable. Looking good. glory, O Lord, the planets, the sun, the moon, and the stars which you set in place. In humble gratitude, we thank you for the safe return from your heavens of these pioneers in space. May their achievements contribute to the unity of mankind and peace for all your people in this holy season. Amen. America, stable water, and a cruise go. A great deal of cheering going on here in the control center uh, as the splice down was watched in real time from the recovery helicopter. Nine. Real smooth shot. Every bit of it. Well done, young man. Outstanding. Mark the time at 304.31, ground elapsed time even. safely on the deck of the ship to fire up their traditional splash down cigars. This is Apollo Control out at 305.25 ground elapsed time. Thank you. 